I've been a vegan since the 70s. Yes, I'm really old. And since those times, I've seen lots of changes. Some for the good, some a little bit too slow. My friend Hester is going to take you on a journey and explore how food comes from the farm to your plate and why people like me are so proudly vegan. These days, people are talking much more about food. People are questioning where their food comes from, what's good for them, what should they be eating, and whether animals are being farmed in the right way. Young people are beginning to think a little bit more about the ethics of food production, but few really know about the reality of eating meat. My favourite meat is chicken, but I don't really know where it's from. I thought it, I think it's from farms. Animals are living creatures like us, so we have to give them a little bit of respect. But when I'm eating chicken, I don't really think about it because like, I just like it and I can't help it. Some people don't know like when you eat meat, where it's all come from and where it's been before it got to your plate. To find out more about the animals we eat, we need to start at the beginning. The ancestors of all farmed animals were once wild and free. Take chickens, for example. The birds that are nowadays farmed to produce meat and eggs are descended from red jungle fowl who live in the forests of Asia. The pigs we see on farms today are descended from European wild boars and they can still be found today in parts of Central Europe. Both chickens and pigs have been selectively bred over hundreds and thousands of years. Until the 1950s, while many farmed animals suffered mistreatment and neglect, they often had the opportunity to exercise and feel fresh air. The majority of farms in those days were small family concerns. But soon after the Second World War, things began to change. Farming methods became driven largely by the quest to produce vast quantities of cheap food. Animals were bred to grow faster, put on more muscle for meat, and give birth to much larger litters. Gradually, it became standard practice to imprison huge numbers of animals inside large sheds, where light, heat, and feed can be closely controlled. It's known as factory farming, because animals are treated like units on a production line and everything that makes life worth living, like fresh air and exercise, are ignored. I think a lot of farms are good with chickens and that, but some just don't look after them properly. On the farms, I think that the pigs are happy with their families, but they don't have a clue that they're going to die. I'm at an animal sanctuary to find out a little bit more about the different personalities of chickens and pigs. Hello, Marion. Oh, hiya, Hester. Good How are you? you again. Can I see some of your new animals? Please do. I'd love you to. Yeah. So who's this? Oh, this is Kerry. Um, she's about a year old now and coming up for a year old. So tell me how, how you got Kerry. Um, she just found somebody brought her to us. It's not an uncommon scenario, I think, with piglets. Because they're so slippery, if you like, they just escape. And I think they're just so uber intelligent. And how was she as a piglet? What was she like when she came to you? <laughs> I always say hand rearing a piglet is the most fun you could ever have in your life. They are hysterical. <laughs> and do they have different personalities? Are they, oh. Do they all behave in the same way? Or? But no, they're as different as you and I. I mean, some of them are irritable. Most of them, however, are wonderful. I can hear quite a lot of snoring behind me. Yeah. Do you think these pigs dream when they sleep? Definitely, yeah, I really do. I mean, they scrabble their feet and they chatter and their eyes move. I mean, everything indicates to me that they're dreaming. Of course, they're very intelligent. Why would they not? They're, 
they're extraordinary animals and uh, way more intelligent than a dog. I taught, for instance, one pig to sit. It took me about half an hour. And uh, in no time flat, I'd say 90% of my pigs could sit on command purely by observation. These pigs are clearly very happy animals. In contrast, what's it like for farmed pigs? Gosh, it's so, I mean, I find it so difficult, so heartbreaking. It's awful, it's awful. Pig farming is amongst the most intensive of all. 70% of pigs farmed for food in this country are reared inside factory farms. They will never see daylight and never feel grass under their trotters. These are the mother pigs, sows, who produce the piglets who are fattened for bacon, ham and sausages. They are confined in these metal structures called farrowing crates when they are about to give birth and are kept there for up to three or four weeks. Farrowing crates are designed to allow piglets to suckle while stopping them from being crushed by their mothers. But they are not natural and deny mother pigs their natural instinct to build a nest and look after their young. After only three to four weeks, the piglet is taken away. The mother is soon made pregnant again, usually through artificial insemination and the piglet is put into crowded pens to be fattened for meat. These curious young animals are stressed and bored in their barren and overcrowded crates, often frantically trying to bite the tails off their penmates out of frustration. Farmers try to prevent this by breaking off some of their teeth and cutting the ends off their tails. Factory farm pigs are specially bred to grow unnaturally fast and put on a lot of weight which puts a great strain on their bodies and causes painful health problems, particularly to their legs. On factory farms, the conditions are often filthy, which makes a perfect breeding ground for infectious diseases such as swine flu and meningitis. It doesn't seem fair that all that happens for the sake of a sausage. But it's not only pigs that have got this problem. Do you want to come and meet the chicken? Let's go and meet the chicken. Come on, then. So, are chickens like pigs? Do they have different personalities? Oh, crikey, yeah. I mean, we've had chickens that um, just love people, hate chickens. We, in fact, have one now that hates chickens and loves ducks. Brilliant. Mon chéri, je t'aime. What do they spend their time doing? What, what sort of behaviours do they have? Um, well, they roam quite far and wide, given the opportunity. And do they make friends with each other? Oh, yeah. They make little groups of friends, and they all go off together, and they wait. And some of them, in fact, I found waiting outside of other ones' houses. They live in different <laughs> houses, waiting outside for them to be let out in the morning. And when they come out, they play, and they all run up and down completely liberated yeah. and free. And I cannot see how that can be fulfilled in any way for them in a farm environment. They may look different from their wild ancestors, but today's pigs and chickens want to do the same things and behave in the same way. They haven't lost any of their basic natural instincts. As factory farms have got bigger and more intensive, so the farming industry has grown more secretive about what goes on inside. Animal Aid sent a team of undercover investigators to show the price that animals really pay to produce our meat. Approximately 95% of the chickens farmed for food in this country are reared inside huge sheds on factory farms. There may be 45,000 birds crammed into a single shed. They are known as broiler birds and have been specially bred to produce meat rather than eggs. At this stage, they are only 10 to 12 days old. They have no daylight and nowhere to perch or hide away from the other birds. A week later though, it's starting to get a lot more crowded. 
because the birds have fastened up so fast. They have been bred to grow at twice the natural rate and they are also fed a high protein diet to make them put on more weight quickly. These birds are growing unnaturally fast. It's like having an adult's body on a child's legs. Those legs just simply cannot cope with that weight. And what we are seeing is a lot of animals that are lame or that are crippled. And these animals actually die because they cannot reach the water, they cannot reach the food. This bird is convulsing, um, won't move at all. Uh, and obviously is in an absolutely dire situation and needs to be removed. I wonder how long uh, she's been unable to get to water. This is definitely a bird who requires immediate veterinary assistance. This film was taken on our investigator's third visit. The birds are now 26 days old and the health problems created by rapid growth rates and overcrowding are more obvious. These sheds provide the perfect environment for infectious diseases to spread. Viruses that normally would die out in nature are kept alive in the factory environment. People in very close contact with animals can then become infected with these very dangerous viruses and bacteria. When the chicken reach 39 days old, they are only three days away from the time they are taken for slaughter. There is barely enough room to move at all now, and the bedding of wood shavings or chopped straw is wet and filthy with urine and droppings. Walking around in their own mess causes burns and sores to develop on feet and legs. While healthy chickens would normally live for about six years, these broiler birds are sent off to be killed after just six weeks. When you open a chicken shed, this is what you see. The size of a football ground, but a mass of white. If you can imagine trying to walk in there, pick them up, throw them, catch, catch, catch. If their wings break, they break. If their legs break. Most nights we went out to catch 30, 35,000 chickens. Eight to 12 drawers, 30 chickens in a drawer all chucked in a heap together. They'll fit in there on top of one another, but what happens is there's no breathing space, very little air. If they was a bit lively, their heads would be stuck in drawers and you'd shut the drawer and their heads would come off. It's not a nice sight. In the UK, 800 million chickens are slaughtered every year. Now that's the same as more than 2 million chickens being killed every day. So what can you do if you don't think this is right? One option is reduce the amount of meat you eat and only choose free-range organic. But even these animals are sent to the slaughterhouse when they're very young. So that's why young people now are choosing a different option. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So, what do you think of the food? What's your favourite? I couldn't actually tell the difference between a normal chicken burger and this burger. It's kind of surprising that this is all pure and it has no meat at all. You can get great Thai vegan food, Indian vegan food. I mean, veganism is a massive thing now. So your options are many and varied. Have you ever considered being vegan? I definitely have. I feel a lot of the food choices I make as a skateboarder is it's just the fizzy drinks, chocolate. I feel that if I went vegan, it would definitely benefit me. It would. And you're a sports person, and you know some of the greatest sports people are vegan. Some of our strongest animals are vegan. Yeah, and <laughs> see, massive animals that yeah, are vegan. That's the, thing, that's the thing I find interesting as well is that the animals that we eat are just eating plants regardless. All of the nutrients, all of what they need is yeah. in the plants regardless. So it shows you, you know, you can get your protein, you can get all the nutrients you want from other sources rather than from animals. Sasha, have you ever thought about the effects of the meat industry on the environment? Three years ago, I turned vegetarian, so I did lots of research into cattle farming. The rainforest is being cut down at extreme rates to provide land to farm meat cattle. So, that, I felt like that affected me quite personally and it made me want to become vegetarian. 
Yeah. Why don't you just take that other step and go vegan? I would like to, and I've said for a long time I'd like to. My parents are not as big on it, but when I move out, I think there's a very good chance I will turn vegan. Cool. Okay, yeah, you. basically. <laughs> that was great. It's so inspiring listening and talking to young people about being vegan. In the end, the choice is yours. The fate of millions of animals depend upon the choices ordinary people like you make about the food on your plate. The decisions you make can really make a difference to their lives.